Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to add a mouse follower effect to your cursor. We can see we have this web page over here and if I move my mouse pointer, we can see that we have an element that follows the mouse. You can find these types of animations in modern websites. And we also have other animations over here. So if I hover over this uh, heading, we can see that uh, we have welcome displayed over here. And it's also kind of sticky. So if I move this cursor, we can see that it stays there for quite some time. And then if I move this pointer even more, it comes back. And we also have this text over here at the bottom. And if I hover over this, we have an image displayed over here. So in this video, I'll show you how to add this effect to your websites. So let's get started. <laughs> Right here I have created this folder called mouse follower and I just opened it with VS code. Now let's go ahead and create the necessary files. So let's click on new file and let's create an HTML file. I just name it index.html and we also need to have a CSS file. So let's create a new file and let's name it style.css. Alright first of all let's design this web page and then we'll focus on the mouse follower. So let's create the HTML code. Now in VS Code you have the shortcut where you can just press exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. And let's link our CSS file over here. So I'll just type link and press tab. And in the SRF I'll just type style.css. And let's start with the markup of our design. The first thing we will do is let's create a division with the class of container. And in that let's create a heading. So let's create an H1. So let's type H1. And here let's tap hi, welcome. And let's open this in our browser and let's see how it looks. So I have this extension called live server installed in VS Code. So once you install that, you can just right click over here in the HTML and click on open with live server. And here we can see we have the heading displayed. And now we need to create this text. So I'll just copy this text from here. And let's go back and let's create a paragraph tag. And in here I'll just paste the content. And now let's create this text over here which says hover me to show image. So for that let's create a division and let's give it a class of show image. And in that I'll just tap hover me to show image. Right now if you go back to our design here we can see this is how it looks. Let's add some basic styling. So let's go to a style or CSS file. And first of all let's select the body and uh, let's give it a margin of 0. And we'll also set the height to 100 viewport height. And now let's style the container division. So let's type dot container. And let's set the width of the container to 700 pixels. And let's set the margin inline to auto so that it is in the center. Right now let's style this heading. So let's type H1. And let's set the font size to 100 pixels. And let's set the font weight to 900. And let's also remove the margin. So let's type margin 0. And for the container, I'll just add some top padding. So here I'll just type padding top. And let's set it to 50 pixels. Right now for the paragraph, let's add some line height. So let's type P for the paragraph. And let's set the line height to 2. And now let's style this text over here. So that text has a division with the class of show image. So let's type dot show image. And let's set the font size to 30 pixels. And now if we add a background color to this, we can see that it extends the whole width of the container. Now we don't want that to happen. We can see that we don't have the complete width over here. So if I hover over here on the right, we can see that the image is not being displayed. So for that, you have to set the display to inline block. And now we can see we have this width over here. Now we have to do the same for this heading. So if I go over here to the H1 and if I just type background red, we can see that it has this full width. So we have to set the display to inline block. Right now, let's remove the background colors. And that's basically it with the styling of our web page. Now let's add the mouse follow effect. Now for that we're going to use a library called mouse follower. So you can just google for mouse follower library and you'll find this website. 
I will also leave the link of this website in the description. So let's open the website. And now if we scroll down, we can see that we have the guide of how to use it. So here we have the option of installing from NPM as well, but we're going to use uh, CDN. So this is the CDN. Now for this to work, we also need to have the GSAP library. So here we can see mouse follower requires GSAP library to work. So we also need to copy the CDN of GSAP. So here we have the CDN of GSAP and mouse follower. And we also have this script over here. So let's copy all of this. And let's go back to our HTML file. And now we need to paste it inside the head section. So this is the head section. So let's go to the end of the head section and let's paste it over here. Now we also need to copy these two lines of code. So let's copy these and let's paste it just above these two script tags. And now let's go ahead and copy and paste this script tag at the bottom. So let's cut this from here. And let's paste it over here just before the body ends. And if you go back to the mouse follower library here, we can see we also have this code to add options. So let's copy this code from here. And let's paste it over here instead of this line of code. And now here we can see it says we need to add the container. So right now it is set to this class MF container. Now we don't have this class over here. We have this division with the class of container. So let's change this to just container. And now let's go back to our website. And now we can see when we move the mouse around, we have this element following our mouse pointer. And if you go outside this container division, it disappears. Now, if you want to add this uh, mouse follower element to all your website, then you can go back to your HTML. And here, instead of container, you have to change this to document.body. And now we can see we have the mouse follower everywhere in our website. Now, let me show you how to add the text that is displayed over here when you hover over this. So here we can see we have this welcome text displayed over here. So for that, you have to go back to your HTML. And here for the element, you have to add a data attribute. So you have to type data hyphen cursor hyphen text equals. And here you can add the text. So I'll just type welcome. Now if you go back to our website, here we can see when you hover over this uh, heading, we have the welcome text displayed over here. Now we also have this effect where it feels like the text is sticking to the heading. So for that, you have to go back to your HTML and you have to add another attribute over here, which is data cursor stick. And now if you go back and if you hover this heading, we can see that we have the text sticking to the heading. But we have this effect where it feels like it is uh, stretching. Now for that, you have to play around with different settings that we have in this library. So if you go back to the library, and if you scroll down here, we can see all the settings or all the options that we have in this library. So let's just copy this from here and let's go back to our HTML and let's paste it over here inside the script tag. Now here we can see all the options that we can change. Now here it has already set the document body as the container. Now if you scroll down, we can see that we have the option of skewing. Now here we can see that the skewing text is set to 2. Let's change it to zero. And now if you go back to our website, now here we can see that the text is not stretching. So it works all right. Now let's add the image to this uh, text. So let's go back to our HTML. And uh, here we have the text. We have this division with the class of show image. Now here we need to add an attribute. So let's type data hyphen cursor hyphen IMG equals and here we need to add the link of the image. So if you have an image in your project, you can just add the link over here. I'll just add a link of an image from Pixabay. So here I'm in pixabay.com, which is an awesome place to find free images for your websites. And uh, let's find an image from here. Let's use this image. So let's click on the image and let's right click over here and click on copy image address. And let's go back to our HTML and let's paste it over here inside this data attribute. And now if you go back to our website and if I hover over this text, we can see that the image is displayed over here. So that's basically how you can add mouse follower element along with all these animations to your website. 
Right, that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.